However, um, aside from that potential conflict, um, functionally, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it makes sense that in theory, a good spokesperson could serve both roles. And you know what? A candidate becomes a default spokesperson anyway. So, so, but the reality is a candidate is primarily a spokesperson for his or her uh, office seeking. Uh, a secondary role is a representing a party that may or may not have endorsed them. Um, so, uh, I recognize the potential for a conflict of interest and the, the party should probably consider that also. Uh, what we've run into, I, I think it's important that the party uh, identify more than one spokesperson quick enough, it, but you know, you have to find someone who has enough institutional knowledge and, and, and articulate enough and you know, pretty face and stuff. So, so it's not like you can just find those people easily. Ajay Rai from Los Angeles County. I have a couple of questions on the, the mechanics of, what, uh, of a campaign and I think there are two things that you mentioned. The first one was the financial statement which you said a candidate should release. Uh, I'd like to know a little bit more about what exactly the financial statement is, how do you release it, and what's in that statement. That's the first question. The second one is you're keeping the campaign open after the elections is over. Is that, is that something that the campaign, uh, uh, candidate should consider mm -hmm. and why? Yes, uh, if you look at, if you go to the website for the uh, Secretary of State in California, you can research what some other office uh, holders and candidates have done. Uh, for instance, if you look at, if you look at Deborah Bowen, uh, the current Secretary of State, she has four or five uh, campaign accounts that are still listed. Some of them are archived. And then uh, you also have a situation where um, I'm not saying I'm going to do this, but let's say I wanted to run again as uh, for Secretary of State. Uh, two years before the next election, I'd, I'd initiate a new campaign with uh, 2016 on it. But it, it makes sense to keep the old one going for a number of reasons. One is if you can afford to, you know, Google search results. You want, you want to keep your active stuff active. Uh, you know, it's in the top results in Google. So that's like getting media. Um, right now, somebody types David Curtis Green Party, those four words into Google, I'm the number one result on Google. Uh, that's global. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a form of media. But, okay, to keep it open, it's unfortunate it triggers reporting responsibilities in the statute so it's just more paperwork like every three months or something or every four months I have to file a form 460 which is a pain in the butt um, but there'll be very little activity uh, basically it'll be me donating enough money to the account periodically to pay my $49 nation builder bill each month and whatever else you know the other website presence and stuff so, so it's just a, it's a cost thing. It's based, it's similar to an archival function. If you want to maintain an, uh, an accessible archive for your uh, branding, uh, let's say, well, the logical thing for me or somebody like me to do next is seek uh, like uh, what Mike Feinstein's doing, you know, a more local office. So, so it, it makes sense from a branding standpoint to maintain your brand, you know, the David Curtis brand, uh, David Curtis Green Party brand is really what, that's the brand I have right now. And, and really uh, the words, I own the words vote David Curtis. So, so I have to, you know, it's like, it's like I own Coke or something. I have to maintain that branding in order to recycle it, the value that's resident in that branding into the next thing I do, whatever it is, you know, run for city council or something. Uh, Shane Q. E. Los Angeles County. Hi, Shane. Hi. Um, are you thinking of writing a report about how the interaction between you and the Green Party should be improved? I would encourage you to do it. Oh, yeah, that's a really good suggestion. I hadn't thought of it um, other than just my day-to-day -day dialoguing with uh, the individuals that uh, make up the Green Party. Because uh, my, my frame is uh, I'm not a groupthink person. 
I, I'm more of an individualist person, so when I look at the party, I don't see I don't see the party. I see the individuals I interact with, and and those are you know that's thousands of people. So I you know and I take them one at a time and stuff. But I, I think it's a really good suggestion. It hadn't occurred to me, and I think uh, that's good for a postmortem and also transitioning back into a role of uh, just interacting with the party as a non you know non active candidate. Thank you. Um, I just have a right. Um, you mentioned some kind of problems with some difficulties in communication. Would you, would you kind of post some solutions in that report too? Oh, sure. Sure thing. Um, yeah, I think, well, the communication uh, that I've noticed lately, I'll just, I'll just hint at it. Um, I'm detaching from Facebook as a device. I don't like the idea that Mark Zuckerberg owns that content. So, so anything we post there, or anything I post there, I no longer own it. Um, and so I'm, 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 I've been, I've spent six days so far deleting content from Facebook, and it's really tedious. There's not a delete all button. Um, How about that? Yeah. So, so what I. One thing, oh, I should have mentioned this. Uh, one thing I've noticed is the our platforms for online communication are not secure for various reasons. Um, Facebook, uh, all of your content it becomes owned by this other entity. Uh, so it's like a basic violation of not only privacy but um, copyright. So. Uh, and then also in our email conversations and in, in these you know these dreadful um, email uh, forums, uh, we don't really know who we're talking to there. Uh, we know who we think we're talking to, and then there's these troll people, and we don't know what their motivations are. Um, so that's why I've been uh, pulling off of Google uh, Gmail. I'm, I'm avoiding conversing on that vehicle uh, for the same reason uh, Gmail owns your content. Um, and when you write the content on there, you know, there's three or four benevolent people and then there's like some troll and I don't know if the troll is like a shill for the Democrats or shill for the Republicans or a shill for the nuclear industry, you know. So, so you don't know what the motivations are of the people when they're Communicating, you know, if they're just trying to cause problems, or so. Um, so I think I think it's really difficult. You know, how do we find secure channels for re remote communication? That that's a that's like the core issue. Um, and I I don't know what the answer is because you know the NSA currently is harvesting every single bit of this. So you know, what do you do about that? I have no idea. They're, they're going to say, oh, we have this new encryption. And, you know, if a human encrypted it, so it can be unencrypted. So there's no secure online transmission, unfortunately. Okay, okay, great. Um, yeah, I'll just say my media strategy, um, I didn't know that the core issue of my campaign was going to be uh, dealing with an extremely hostile media. I. I didn't know that. I, I, you know, I came from Nevada where the media was kind of okay to me. Um, and then, so that became the core issue was like David versus the media. Uh, and uh, so I'm working on that. I'm, I'm going to interact even more with the media uh, just as a private person. A presentation to a group of fourth graders, like 20, 30 fourth graders. And I introduced them to the concept of journalism. They they had never been introduced to the concept of journalism. There's an opportunity there. Uh, we we can reestablish what journalism means in the country. Um, I, I think that's really important. Uh, journalism has been so damaged by uh, various forces, uh, the disruptive influence of the internet, but also just the corporate takeover of it. I think uh, there's a real opportunity for us to explore journalism, um, and I think it would partner well with uh, party maintenance.
the general concept of party maintenance is really going to be difficult uh, given the top two. Top two is a nightmare. It seems to be, you know, just a device to kill us off. And the voters were just dumb enough to go along with it or, or apathetic enough or mean enough. I don't know. So there was some tipping point they were able to get it on. So speaking from a third party perspective, as long as there's top two, uh, we're not going to grow the we're not going to grow a party at the state office seeking level. Got to get rid of top two. Uh, I'm afraid that the nonpartisan uh, voters that segment of the population is growing so significantly that they don't care about how bad the top two is, and they're even deceiving themselves, thinking there's some benefit to it when there isn't much benefit. Um, I was at a panel discussion in Berkeley, and one of the authors of the top two spent 20 minutes offering zero justification for it, and I was really hoping to hear one. But yeah, thank you for allowing me to represent the party this uh, these last two years, and thank you. <laughs> have have a nice lunch. If you have any follow up questions, uh, you know, just uh, write write to me. Um, I'm going to maintain my Twitter account and uh, my email and my cell phone numbers on there. So just call me up. Well, David, a little bit of good news on your last point about the top two, and that is, if you go to the your browser, and notice I didn't say Google it because we shouldn't be talking about corporations as a verb. But if you go to the LA Times and put in um, California's jungle primary in today's issue, Harold Meyerson, who uh, is a, a, used to be the editor of the LA Weekly and is a big Democratic Party hack, um, and I say that in a positive way, um, he came out with an op-ed and guess the top two, a major one, that uh, the fact that it got printed in the LA Times where he recommends dumping it, it's called California's jungle primary, try to dump it. And that just came out today, or I guess yesterday. Wait, 21st second? Today's the 21st? Yeah. So anyway, um, we're getting a little movement, and it, it, it uh, anyway, you can read it to see, see the arguments for it, but that's just a good sign. So we will be doing that. Yeah. No, I think, I think also there's some motivation for uh, the Democrats and maybe some Republicans to modify it anyway, because it's, it's uh, setting up a situation where they're having to spend money competing so so you know their motivation would be their motivation independent of us would be let's modify this process so we don't have to spend so much money competing so that's what i'm afraid that that that's their next play is uh we can maybe think a little and anticipate what their play might be uh you know how do we monkey with the process now so that we don't have to compete against each other in the primary. You know, that's what I would be thinking if I was a Democratic operative. So. Of course, you're, you're not. Thank you. Thank you for us instead. All right. Thank you. Enjoy lunch. <laughs>